Our feature story is brought to you by Budget Car Rental. I want to rent a Nissan X-Trail. I want a Ford Explorer. I want to rent a Suzuki Jimny. A, I want a Hyundai Accent. I want a Kia Sorento. If you need a rental car, come over to Budget Rent a Car, a proud sponsor of Radio Guadalupe, 101.9 FM. The rosary for me is like an umbilical cord from God to me, giving me spiritual nourishment and hydration throughout the day. I count truly blessed the day that I am able to pray all 20 mysteries of the rosary. If I'm working, if I'm stressed, if I'm in a meeting, sometimes I'll just even hold the rosary in my hand or put it on the desk in front of me as a reminder that Mama Mary is near, she loves me, She's walking with me, she helps me. I'm a very lucky kid because I have this family who teach me how to do the rosary since I was small. When I would wake up in the morning as a child and I was always raised up with my grandparents, I would wake up in the morning and I would hear my grandparents praying at 6 a.m. together the rosary. I would feel like life is just okay. We're gonna be okay because grandma and grandpa's rosary prayers are above me. Today is going to be fine. No tests, no school issues are going to trouble me. Everything will be fine as long as I hear my family praying together. Contemplation or meditation is the highest form of prayer and unlocks the gates to the reservoir of untapped love that we carry within us. I have discovered the, the, um, the mystical purpose of, of the beads. Uh, at the onset of Vatican Council II, a Jesuit priest Karl Rahner uh, made a prophetic statement when he said that the Christian, the Catholic of the modern era would have to become a mystic in order to live his faith, her faith, and survive the, the, the trends of the modern times. A mystic is a person who seeks by contemplation and self-surrender to obtain unity with God. I was introduced to the prayer of the rosary since very young, uh, many years ago. And like every good Catholic, uh, I took it up for a while and stopped uh, praying it um, quite um, several times, no? picking it up and uh, becoming delinquent in, in the prayer. I didn't used to pray the rosary so much. I used to pray it once in a while or maybe once a week. From since I was going to school, we used to pray the rosary. And after getting married, I still continue once in a while. The full rosary, though not often prayed, contemplates all the mysteries. It contains a full set of 15 groups of 10 beads versus the standard five found on most rosaries. All Catholics know these prayers by heart and can repeat them almost automatically. So thoughts are directed towards some inner prayer and talk with God during its recital. Joshua 1 verse 8 Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. It's been 
kind of more than a year now that I have um, gone back to it, praying it on a daily basis. For me, the, the rosary, praying the beads, have, has gathered significance in that it has moved me to nurture uh, a mystical spirituality for which we are all called to, to, to live, to grow in, and that's um, the, the practice of observing silence and enter into that reflective spirit. And the rosary is a tool, for me has become a tool, and is an important means to draw me, that draws me to, to that quietness. I think this love of the rosary for me began in my family because every night when my dad got home from work, we would gather as a family and we'd pray the rosary together before bed. And that became part of the rhythm of our family life and something that really did unite us. I started praying the rosary, I think daily, when my son got very sick. He got sick with dengue. He had to be um, rushed to Billy City because his playlists were very low. And um, I came in front of the statue for Lady of Guadalupe and I begged that he would recover. And I made a promise mainly to myself that I would start praying the rosary daily. He recovered from that. He recovered from the dengue. Praying the rosary for me has been something that's been in my life since I was very small. I, at a very young age, my mother was the one who instilled in me with praying, especially praying one Our Father and three Hail Marys in the morning. So Im imagine every day praying, getting up in the morning, going to sleep. And it's not only me, it was my brothers and I. We were all instilled that by my mother. So when my mother really got sick, very ill, when she was actually diagnosed with a blood cancer, I praying the rosary for me was something we did every day. Not only with my just with my brothers, but as a family. If we were if someone was out of the house, we were waited until everybody would wait until everybody's home so that we could pray. We went through a very tragic stage in our family's life where my grandfather contracted COVID and as well it altered his case of Alzheimer's to the point that my grandfather didn't know who I was. He didn't recognize his wife anymore. He didn't even know what the hospital was or why he was being detained at the hospital. And the only way we could calm my grandfather down was saying, Daddy, come sit down it's time for us to pray the rosary and he's like okay okay ahorita vamos a rezar we're gonna pray right now and i'd ask him daddy who are we gonna pray to and he would tell me adios nena adios que más nos va a ayudar and to me it was so powerful that my grandfather would be saying because i'm gonna pray to god he's gonna help us who else is gonna help us and he won't, he won't remember a thing but if you remember who god is in your last of the days even if you have no recognition I think that's something so powerful that you can take your faith up to the last day of your, of your time. And that stuck to me that we were praying in the COVID ward. We were just entrusting things and I never saw him cry or be worried about well, where am I going to go or what's going to happen to everyone. Everyone was going to be okay in his thoughts. Having problems in between our family. I used to go to my rosary because I felt that the rosary was something that would help me, calm me, have patience, and learn how to um, manage our problems. And after my children were already growing, I decided to make them join me in praying our rosary. My first boy and girl, I used to put them together with me and pray the rosary. Then my third son, he got sick at the age of five. And so we used to put ourselves to pray and pray the rosary because I told them that we want him to get better because we, they told us that he will, um, 
his um, sickness is something that is not cured, no? Unless a miracle from God. And we used to pray and pray. And I used to ask my little boy to pray by himself because I know he knows how to pray. And he used to do it. Well, thanks God, after the age of maybe eight, my son, didn't, we didn't have to visit the doctor anymore because the doctor said, well, he doesn't have any more problems. And up to now, he is married and he is doing fine. But we continued praying our rosary. As, and my husband, they used to ask me, and how my father doesn't come? I used to tell them, let him, he will someday come with us, no? And after praying and praying to ask them to, our father to love us and to convert himself. Well, thanks God, my husband started joining us in praying and going to church. The rosary is the, a powerful prayer uh, because um, when we pray the rosary, we expect some change, you know. And I am an example for a change because my ordinary life, well, was very hard. But I don't know how many times my, my wife start to pray the rosary uh, before I start to, to live in that same. Because uh, we used to work outside you know, in the jungle and many places far from the family and but I think the, the 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 main point of my life is that I grow in a family that no practice n nothing you know they call in Catholics but not in practice so and until I get married you start to hear about God by Mary and him. So that's why it was very hard for me to accept that because we have a, a life different um, way to live. So um, she um, think of me and start to pray maybe 15 or 20 years and well until the end well he started to see the, the change and but at the beginning i say the, the the rosary is too long uh, it's a repetition words and i feel bored and i feel sleepy and but step by step with the patient of her i continue Isaiah 26 verse 3 You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. The rosary is simple, but the gentle repetition of its prayers makes it an excellent means to move into deeper meditation. It gives us an opportunity to open ourselves to God's word to refine our interior gaze by turning our minds to the life of Christ. By focusing on the lives of Christ and Mary through contemplation on the mysteries, we learn about ourselves in relation to God. I'm also drawn, especially as we live through this pandemic, that the second prayer of the Hail Mary, uh, when we pray, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour. It was a prayer that um, coincidentally was added during the bubonic plague in the Middle Ages when people were dying. It was a worse pandemic than the one we were experiencing. And it was during that um, time that the second prayer to the um, Hail Mary was was appended uh, given the desperation 
the, the experience that uh, people were going through in Europe, which decimated kind of one third of the, of, of the population. The mental prayer is so rich and important. It's like the soul of the rosary, because when we think about the life of Jesus and these 20 mysteries, we're moved to love him more, to imitate him more, to follow more closely his footsteps. I like to say that when we pray the rosary and we're focusing on the mysteries of the rosary, the vocal prayers are like a sound machine and they give us white noise in the background to block out distractions, to keep our body and our mind focused on the 20 mysteries. From small, I remember my mom used to tell us it's time to pray the rosary for your dad. Well, at that time we didn't understand why, but we used to pray with her. And um, she always said, we're going to pray for dad for a conversion. And so we said, let's pray. We used to come together with my other two brothers and then we prayed. I became a, a teenager and an adult, I became a mom and I'm seeing the importance of having the rosary in your life when you have fear of losing a child or something. It's the rosary that I take in my hand that makes me strong. Like how we do the daily prayer, the rosary daily then as a family, we include all those who are in need, those who don't have God in their life, even some of our family members and close ones too. So the rosary is what um, keeps us together, makes us strong, and our faith grows more. This year, I was having a great pain, great pain, but nobody knew of my pain because I didn't want to tell anybody because I was afraid to go to the hospital because of this COVID, no? So I decided to keep it to myself. I said, I will see how much I can stand the pain before I tell someone. I think it was only Our Lady who knew it. <laughs> and for the month of July, I started praying the, um, I prayed the Novena in honor of Our Lady Mount Carmel. And I begged her to, to help me with this pain because even to get up from my bed, I had to push myself all the way up to turn on my bed. I was having great pain. And um, well, I f the last day when I finished my novena, I think it was like a miracle because that pain was gone, completely gone. And for that reason, I cannot stop praying my rosary. The day my mother passed away, you know, we were in the hospital and my mother, she was, she got up early. She had a very, a very long night up you know, and yet she was awake early and um, she was full of energy and she said, um, you know what, uh, give me a bath because I'm going home. What? I said, yes, my lady came. You were sleeping, but she didn't want me to wake you up because she said you're tired. So I didn't wake you up. She came to see me and she said, get ready, we're going home. She told you that? Yes. And I looked so surprised. I gave her that surprise look. I said, don't worry. She said it, that we're going home, so we're going home. She told me we are going home. So I decided to give her a bath, uh, you know, in the hospital. I went to get some water, shampooed her hair because she wanted to shampoo her hair because she, she's going home. And um, the doctor passed by around six. And I happened to bed her by around five, very early. Six, the doctor came and first doctor came around. And then after a little bit afterwards, another doctor came to keep around and then he said, how is my sunshine? And she said, I'm fine, doctor. And 10 minutes afterwards, the doctor saying, you're going home. And I'm like, what? You're going home? He said, yes. So we prepared her and we got a vehicle and we are bringing her home because she's coming home all the way from the hospital to home she was praising the Lord she saw the horizon and she said beautiful green trees beautiful we would pass by a school because it was it was her 
open, their children were playing around, they would, she would say, happy children. That's how we should be happy all the way to home. She was actually praising the Creator, our Creator. But when we got home, that's when we got home, I did not call anybody from the village to say, well, you're we we're going home because a lot of our friends knew she was sick and that she was in the hospital and that I was there. But I didn't tell anybody. So um, when we got home, we opened the, the gate. The gate was open already and Doña Maria was there waiting with a bouquet of flowers, beautiful roses from her garden. And I said, but what is Doña Maria doing there? Because we did not call her. Or the, and she said, oh, no, he said, I have some flowers for your mom. And my mom said, they're for Our Lady. Please put it in the, in, in the, on the altar in her shrine. So I had to go up and put it in the altar for her. Half an hour we got here, my mother passed away. But she did not pass away before receiving communion. I called the priest and the priest came to give her communion and she passed away. That day before, before going with Our Lady, she had also prayed the rosary because we were coming, as on the way we were coming, we were praying. As we were coming, we were praying. She would stop once in a while and say, that's beautiful, oh great, look how beautiful. And she was on the way doing that, but then she was also praying the rosary as she was coming. So when I look back, I say, there were many blessings. I was in the hospital, but my mother always had food. I didn't have to be worrying about going out to get food. She used to pray for all her godchildren. And honestly, almost all of them went to see her there. And all of them that came in but brought food for her or something that she likes, you know, and uh, that's a blessing. I didn't expect that, but it was sent our way. Um, also, when I look back, my mother died on the 16th of July, the day of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. I didn't take into consideration how quickly someone could leave your life. And so the entire month of, of August, and I was starting school again, so I was a, a, a mess, you could say. and. Around September, I was like, I need to start praying because I'm always sad, I'm always upset, and um, and you know, you're always, I'm always asking myself why, but I understand why, but I don't understand why, and so I started to pray, and I was like, maybe that's gonna give me my why answer, and. So I would just do short prayers, you know, and, and I would look at her picture every time I would pray. And after that, I, I would listen to music. I would listen to um, praise and worship. And one day while, while listening to that, um, the song came on, Reckless Love. The song um, Reckless Love came on on the playlist and I, I had to stop the music and and compose myself and at this point I was I was in tears in so much tears and that was one of the songs that she had taught us when she had just moved to, to Benke and it you know in reckless love it talks about how God would leave all 99 of of the sheep to, to of the sheep to find to that crowd just to find this one sheep that, that lost its way and you know bring them back and you would rejoice because that lost one has come back to me and and I, I cried and then I, I had to replay that song about 10 times that day when I listened to it again and I told myself you're gonna start praying the rosary you know maybe that could help you even more and so I looked up because it's not 
it's been a while now that I've prayed the rosary with anyone, much less by myself. So I had to look up how to go back into that. And I got some stuff and some pictures and I downloaded it to my phone. And I started praying. And I tried to pray every other day. And then September got a bit, a bit hectic with school. And I was still in that grieving process so I stopped praying for the the last two weeks of, of September and I told myself before I think a couple days before September ended I told myself this month is October is the month of, of the rosary and you are going to pray and you are going to push yourself and so right on my work desk, I have a picture of Sister Maria from her, her memorial. And I have my rosary right on top of that booklet. So every time I'm, I'm in class or like I'm doing homework or just watching videos and I look at that, that's a reminder for me, pray your rosary. And it's like her telling me, Amy, you know, you need to pray your rosary. For the past four days, I haven't missed praying the rosary and I've actually looking forward to that i usually pray it in the in the evenings after school after i have rested a bit i try to give my t myself about an hour to just focus rosary and then listen it, listen to some praise and worship and and then reflect and every time i pray i i feel like i look at her picture and i'm like okay she's praying with me and so far it's 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 been great um it's refreshing and honestly af like every night after praying it could have been a stressful day um yesterday i had a very stressful day with school and after i prayed it was like a big like a sigh of relief uh that weight taken off of me like all that stress i don't have that stress from the day and uh, in a way, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist, so if a presentation doesn't go well for me, if something doesn't go the way I want it to go, then I'm going to be very judgmental on myself and I'm going to scold myself and you could have done better. And, and so something like that happened yesterday and I was very disappointed in myself in a presentation and after that prayer after that rosary that I did I just smiled so far praying it getting back into this I've realized that it has been helping me because it makes me reflect it makes me think about the day and it makes me think about all these memories I've had with, with the people that I do care about and it makes me want to reach out to them. It makes me want to, to be there for them and, and go out more, even if it's just coming to mass, um, come out more and, and try to see the people that, that I usually interact with that I hadn't seen for that entire year. And, you know, and also give thanks to the people that have meant something to me and have pushed me to be better to be a better individual and so I'm very grateful for Sister Maria and I could say going into this this roller coaster of, of, a, of the past two years I would say um, looking back at it now I would honestly tell her thank you and I still say thank you every night before I go to bed to her because I think if I hadn't met her I wouldn't be where I am now and and you know she would always be like be happy about it and you know don't worry about that and you know she has a big smile and and so many people have heard her backstory and she chose happiness and so these little bumps in the road I should never look at it and be upset about that and and only focus on that on that little aspect that little bump i should 
look at the bigger picture and be happy about life. Looking back at the memories she's given me and, and the memories that I have, I could turn to, I know that at the end of the day I could turn to my rosary and I could pray and that's going to make me feel better. And I, I wish that people, that more people, especially youths, um, we, we tend to turn away from, from stuff that easily makes us want to, like, if it's not interesting to us, then we would, wouldn't want to look at it. And I think it's easy for us to just forget about God and forget about the rosary and, and forget about how beautiful these last, the year in general, but October, November, December, how beautiful it could be in the church and how beautiful it could be praying the rosary and, and listening to music after that. And, and it's something that I'm figuring out and I know that I might, I might have another moment where I'm like, I don't want to do this again. But I think constantly having that person in mind and thinking, you know, she would want me to be better at this. I think that is a reminder of, of you know, pick up your rosary and, and be happy about it. And, and, I, and it does make me happy. And that's what I have to constantly tell myself. You know, you're happy about doing this. You're happy that you have the opportunity to practice your religion. The Agony in the Garden is a very powerful meditation where you experience how the agony must have been almost more agonizing than the crucifixion itself. The anticipation made the crucifixion more agonizing because Christ had a choice to make. It helps you with the different choices you have to make. The Rosary is a very, very deep prayer. It's complex because the situation is beyond words. The things that God does for us are beyond words. Begin very simply and gradually develop a more sophisticated meditation. In the process, we learn to hear the voice of God. The church calls meditation a quest. It is an experience of prayer that reaches beyond the experience itself to something deeper. In the Catechism, the church teaches that Christian prayer should go further from the knowledge of the love of the Lord of Jesus to union with Him. This takes time and it demands that the one who is praying focus on God's love for us, a love he demonstrates through union with Christ. So my life in prayer has been very stable before and a bit rocky after our loss. But if anything, this is a time to take the step to continue that, that journey in prayer and continue the faith that he transferred on to me. Because it's not easy for many people to pass on their faith onto other kids. You have to raise up your child in the loving family of Christ that you have. You have to be able to show them the reason they pray and how faith will really work for them. And to us, I think it was very beautiful that Dad could, my grandfather could give us that, that life in prayer and such a trust to know that even if he's gone, we'll all be okay. Just, he would always tell me, if I ever go missing, please just, please just continue praying in the afternoons. Don't stop that because I just want to hear you pray. Even if I can't hear you, I just want to know that you're still praying after I'm gone. And I would really like to continue that, especially now. It's about um, maybe 28 or 30 years that I'm involved in church things, the jobs. And I know that the rosary is a, a powerful prayer, especially when you pray with, with faith, you know. Um, that's make me a very changed person. And no, I, I sometimes I remind them, hey, it's time for pray the rosary. Help me, help my family. They see me different person. They true and trust more in, in me. <laughs> and that's it. It's uh, 
is good for me and I say thanks God, thanks to my wife and thanks to everybody because they are um, helped me to continue. Well, it's a very hard uh, a Christian life but with the effort of the, the ones that around you, well, it could go ahead. My mother's last th um, minutes, I should say, here on, here on earth. She had several visions and um, we prayed every day. In those prayers we included um, prayers to the Holy Spirit as well as prayers to St. Michael the Archangel. So that's the reason why I have St. Michael here because I'm also devoted to St. Michael. And um, we prayed every day. And uh, when she was in her last moments the night before, she related to me how St. Michael defended her in the last battle. And um, she would say there were monsters, but he said, don't worry. He says, a handsome young man has come to help us. And he has come with a sword in his hand and it has, he has, it has fire and he's taking care of us. He said, don't worry, but I don't want you to see those monsters. Pray without expecting anything. And everything will come your way. Everything. But pray the rosary. As a family, we pray the rosary together. And they have already learned to pray the rosary by themselves. Only the mysteries, well, they are trying to learn them. But they can um, help themselves praying the rosary if they are in need of praying a rosary. Praying the rosary make us to make us come together because we all know the reason why we pray it, no? So in anything that we have or sickness or problem, we join together and meditate the rosary because we know that through the rosary we go to Mary and Mary take us to Jesus, no? And Jesus will take us to the Father. I say that I have a lucky life, and well, I thank you, God, who gave me this family. We don't have to make meditation complicated to make it meaningful. The rosary contains the necessary elements for simple meditation. Praying it with deep and simple concentration, recalling the events of the mysteries and pausing to think about them for a moment, can draw us into a deeper relationship with God, which is the goal of this meditation. John 15:4, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. So when I pray the, the, that, that prayer, the Holy Mary, Mother of God, I make myself present with people of all ages that have experienced trials and, and tribulations. Um, in our 2,000 years of Christianity and, and beyond, a, I identify and make myself present with them. And it draws me to, to, to unite these periods of trial and anticipation of the recreation a process that we're engaged in, a, which we are reminded in, in the book of Revelations that the trials that we go through united with the Paschal Mystery will bring us to the um, resurrection that has begun in the here and now. Also, we as Catholics have the privilege of having the beads of the Rosary that bring us to engage in that introspection where we are called to be one with the Divine. My prayer is that our Lady will teach us how to pray the Rosary. She's a mom, so she taught Jesus how to pray, and she'll teach us how to pray as well, and she'll lead us to Jesus through the Rosary. A possible meditation. She gave birth. 
Am I being called to give something away? Not physically like Mary. How am I offering my creativity, my imagination, myself, my time, and my gifts to God? Reflecting on the words or images that each mystery brings to mind and remaining open to what God would have us understand about how these events relate to our lives is at the core of practicing the praying of the rosary. Don't try to force meditation and don't make it complicated. Simplify it. Rosary meditation has illustrated that some of the greatest soul-stirring moments take place in the gentle, ordinary events of everyday life. And that's our feature. Thanks for watching. For this and more feature stories, you can follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or view on Guadalupe Media channel 96 on CCV or channel 64 on CBC. You can also tune in on the radio in your car, home, or office at 101.9 FM. And please be sure to download the Guadalupe Media radio app from Google Play or the App Store. Our Blessed Mother, lead us to Jesus. Thank you.